Hello everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello, Scott. Hello, jo- Scott, I was going to say that. Hello, Scott. Hello, Josh. <laughs> Hello, everybody. You know, just half asleep. It's, it's the 2021 energy. Um, Love but it. Uh, let's talk about Dying Light 2 because it's in a bit of a state. Now, it's been in a bit of a state um, for the majority of 2020. There was a report back in May um, where an insider report from a Polish website called Polski Game Dev, um, who talked to a bunch of insiders, sorry, a bunch of developers at the time. Um, and the, the general line that came out of that was that the game was a complete mess. Um, mm-hmm. and this is a quote from that report. Uh, so Saying that it's a total mess. The plot direction, gameplay direction, mechanics, and fundamental rules change constantly. The morale is at an all-time low because the bosses have absolutely no idea what they're doing. Disorganization is at uh, is a uh, disorganization at the highest levels is embarrassing. It is still not known what this game should be. Um, Techland's PR manager, uh, PR manager Ola Sanders, PR manager. then PR manager, um, <laughs> then got out there. And, uh, and said, look, no, it's not that bad. Don't worry about it. I mean, there was the public gameplay demo out there from the end of 2019, which looked awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the PR manager, uh, Ola Sandej, uh, got out there and said, look, it's totally fine. Don't worry about it. They then left the company. Um, so mm, I don't know how much he was shouldering. Not a good sign. Um, mm-hmm. Not a good sign. Mm-hmm. But the most recent thing um, is that the a 22-year veteran of Techland, uh, this dude called Pavel Salinger, who was one of the three main writers on Dying Light 2, um, has now left the studio. Um, and so Techland have got out there again and said, look, don't worry. Um, you know, we do have exciting news to come about Dying Light 2, um, but the game is delayed indefinitely because of all the stuff that happened in 2020, so it's basically on fire, um, although you can cite the end of the 2019 gameplay demo as clearly there's something there, but um, what's your general thoughts on Dying Light? Because I kind of feel like it's it's kind of overlooked, but has such a cult following. It does, it really does, like a lot of people really love that. I know you and Patterson absolutely adored it back when it came out, and mm. for a good reason, like it was a real step up from Dead Island, like in terms of, um, you know, actual combat, fighting the zombies felt better than ever, but obviously the parkour was the kind of, the USP, the unique selling point mm. of the title, like being able to free run across this great dense city whilst battling zombies was a dream come true. And it always felt like a sequel would have capitalized on those core tenants in a great mm. way. But obviously it never came out, Scott. And now it's in this kind of like <laughs> weird space that uh, that Dead Island 2 exists in, ironically, mm. considering that Techland was the original developers of that game. Like Dead Island 2 is nowhere to be seen and Dying Light 2 is nowhere to be seen either. And um, I was always a bit confused by their initial showings of the sequel because when they were mm. coming out and they were talking about how much of an impact you can have on the world and how important the story was and these kind of like RPG elements that you could influence factions, you could branch the story Mm. off into different areas. To me, that was never what Dying Light was stronger. Like that was never the core appeal of the the original game. Like the story was the weakest aspect by far. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, I thought it was commendable that they would try and improve that area. But on the other hand, I was like, you might have gone way too far in the other direction, maybe gone a bit over ambitious when all this really needs to be is a very solid um, zombie action game that's, mm. you know, that gives you this great open world. So it's in a, such a strange place, and I thought we would be playing it by now, but the more it gets yeah. delayed, and the more radio silence we have, I'm just like, what's going on? This report obviously seems to be more accurate by the day, even if, like you said, the former <laughs> PR manager was like, nah, don't believe a word. Don't worry, it's totally fine, but I am leaving. <laughs> I am going out the door yeah. as I say that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, the original release date was spring last year. Um, the weird thing, you mentioned like the um, the idea of like the whole, you know, overtaking the city, and that's part of the 2019 demo that the the, the dude you're playing as, I think he's called Aiden, um, goes to have a word with this particular mob boss and they control some faction of the city. Because like Dying Light 1, for as much as it's praised for the mechanics and actually making parkour work in first person, it's only that and Mirror's Edge that ever got it to work in first person. Yeah. Um, that, the biggest criticism of Dying Light 1, from what I could glean, I've actually never played Dying Light 1 outside the demo, um, was that the main villain was a bit that the main villain was mm-hmm. a little bit chasing Far Cry style and it's like I kind of wonder if they've gone for Dying Light 2 it's like well we should actually flesh that side out and have like multiple districts multiple crazy villain men um, and I kind of think that if you imagine the dev time that this has taken it's kind of before even Far Cry 5 so it's like before we got completely sick of big crazy yeah. antagonist man who talks to you super close in the camera um, and I kind of wonder if they were going to chase that route and sort of you could kind of blend Far Cry's approach to antagonist with like a district based power system kind of like Shadow of 
Mordor or something. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I like the idea of what they're going for in theory. And the, I keep citing the 2019 demo. Obviously, that's all that's out there. Um, but it does look really promising. So, But I guess, yeah. you know, in regards to what this dude said that was part of the Polish report, um, that, you know, disorganization at the highest levels is embarrassing and we still don't know what the game is. Um, maybe that's just the case, that, like, some of them are like, we should make this really cool parkour combat thing. And the higher-ups or whoever are pushing for, no, we should ape Ubisoft and we should ape Far Cry because that's where the big bucks are. Yeah, I mean, Scott, does anyone know how to make a video game these days? I feel like every single time something <laughs> falls apart, they're the same issues that are cited over and over again, no matter what the game, no matter what the game is, no matter what the genre is, no matter the team oh. behind it. It's all about disorganization at the highest level, and no one knows that's, what they're working on, no one knows what it is. That, that's genuinely <laughs> snapped me in well, two. I just sort of sat there and went, no, they can't really. I'm sort of like, <laughs> my default went to 2D games. I was like, well, pixel stuff still yeah. worked. And like, that's exactly. cool. And Nintendo can do 3D things, but Cyberpunk's literally on fire, slapping itself in yeah. the face 24 seven. Anyway, carry on. Yeah, just well, a dead I, man I just over think here. That the, <laughs> the, the AAA industry might just be fundamentally broken at its core because these same <laughs> yeah. stories keep coming out over and over again. Oh, and, God. you know, like it, hopefully Dying Light 2 turns out to be really good but from what this report was saying last year you know the fact that every quest was more or less just a fetch quest i think they mentioned mm. the fact that no one yep. really knows how they're going to pull the story together we've seen time and time again you know developers and publishers come out with these great showings like this e3 2019 demo where it's like look at the impact you can have on the world look what you can do but more often than not, that's just a vertical slice and it doesn't actually yep. exist. Like you can't play that thing. And then they need to somehow realize that and the ambitions are always far too high and the team can't quite um, reach the highest heights. You know, going back to CD Projekt Red for a second and Cyberpunk, mm. this to me kind of feels like something similar in the fact that it was like Techland, you know, before Dying Light, you know, they made Dead Island, but they weren't really considered like this massive, massive developer, you know what I mean? No. Like, but then like that, Dying Light Call did. Yeah, like Dying Light did elevate them to another level, I think, in terms of mainstream, and perhaps similar to how The Witcher 3 did in the mainstream's eye for CD mm. Projekt Red, they've got a bit over ambitious with their next project and thought, well, we've now got this, you know, freedom, we've got this money, we're, we're, we're a proven success now, we could do whatever we want, but then they've got lost in the weeds and they've got lost in this disorganization or whatever. Mm-hmm. I hope not, but to me, like, we've, we've seen history play out like this over and over again. And I don't want it to be true, Scott, but like I said, I does anyone know how to make a video game at all <laughs> in the modern age? Because I'm, I'm not convinced they do. <laughs> I mean, even if if even the Avengers can't survive more than like a week, then it's, yeah. there is there is a hell of a reckoning that needs to be talked about. And um, also, though, to sort of like round this whole thing out, is the core appeal of Dying Light something that is now not as much? It's not as obvious as it used to be. Like the zombie fad sort of felt like it was a thing that was very much endemic of the early 2010s. Um, you know, like you had like the Left 4 Dead and, Di- and Dead Island and all these different things, and Call of Duty zombies like managed to become this whole mm-hmm. thing. And I feel like even COD zombies has sort of died off a bit. Um, even though Rich keeps like hammering at the window telling me to play the the latest one um but in terms of like zombie appeal stuff do you think that that has changed because you play i think you've you've played way more zombie based stuff than i have in general anyway i guess um to, for one i i agree with rich mm. this year's call of duty zombies has absolutely gripped me in a way that call so of duty zombies never has before but i think it's really interesting the two that you mentioned there you mentioned left for dead and you mentioned dead island you know from back in the day <laughs> it's funny that yeah. this year you know unless something happens we'll have both their spiritual successes we'll have dying light 2 and we'll have back <laughs> for blood which is very much left for dead you know three in all but name from the original developers and stuff like that so mm-hmm. i don't think the fact that it's zombies will negatively impact it i mean we got world war z a few years ago you know what i mean as long as the game's good and i think dying light more than any other zombie game from around that time really did try to innovate in terms of of its mechanics you know like you said you obviously have the parkour you have this cool open world but you also have that really interesting day night system which has become a little Mm. bit more standard now but the idea of going out during the day trying to scavenge as much as you can and then nightfall coming and the zombies becoming even more stronger and you having to run to a safe house like that is still a cool idea and it could be Mm. innovated upon even more it's just it depends what they focus on it depends like what happens now because i feel like a lot of the goodwill for dying light which still is a great game with all of its dlc packaging which they supported for way longer than they had to by the way like that was a really good move like i don't know if it has the same staying power that it once had i don't know if the same Mm. feverish desire for more dying light content is there in the way it was you know even two years ago i'm not sure Mm. whether that's just the game itself or whether it's zombies as a whole like you said 
I think it's fascinating. Like, I mean, they, like I said, like, you know, well, like you said, Techland started out doing Dead Island. That thing is, was always held up as one of the most disappointing games of all time because it was, the tone was so different to how that trailer was shown off. And then they didn't, you know, they started Dead Island 2, then they pivoted across to Dying Light. And then now it, there's a whole new studio called Dan Buster um, that's getting Dead Island 2 over the finish line mm-hmm. while they're all, while Techland are now struggling with Dying Light 2. And it's just, it's weird, like this sort of DNA of like first person action heavy zombie games, which should be the easiest thing to get right. But even Valve didn't do Left 4 Dead 3. And it's not until yeah. very recently that we've seen like Back 4 Blood come together. And it's like, I don't know, like something about kinetic zombie based action just seems to be this, I don't know, this, this rabbit's foot thing to get a hold of. You're right, Scott, and I will, as a final kind of note, and again, this is just, this, this, this part is just entire wild speculation and conjecture on my <laughs> behalf, but I wonder whether, in an age of live services, in, a, in an age of, you know, mm. WB in particular, pushing for all their franchises to adopt this live service mentality where you're constantly playing the game and you're constantly pumping money into it, I wonder mm. whether that, any mandates from the very top, have transformed what Dying Light 2 was initially going to be, and maybe now it is trying to incorporate more of those elements into it. Again, that part is entirely my own wild speculation, so don't take that as fact, but I wonder, you know, in the age that we're currently in, and so many franchises going down that route, I wonder whether that at all has impacted the development of the game, and I guess we'll see it soon whenever it's re-unveiled, you know, whether it has any of those mm. live service elements baked into it now that it might not have mm-hmm. had before. I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, if, if Cyberpunk 2077 can have a loot system and a multiplayer planned out, then I think pretty much anything can go down that route. It's definitely where the money yeah. is, having Call of Duty made $2 billion in just microtransactions. God, um, yeah. Just... Insane. But yeah, let us know what you think down in the comments below of the state of Dying Light 2. Are you psyched for the game overall? And do you think they'll actually be able to bring it back in 2021? For now, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. I've been Josh from WhatCulture.com. And we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.